today we are finally going to explore the ROS Talk integration on Skahoy controllers. I understand many of you have eagerly anticipated this moment and now it has arrived. I'll guide you through the process of assigning sources to MEs, mini MEs, multi sources, auxiliaries and keyers. Additionally, we'll also cover how to manage transitions and keyer statuses. I'll also demonstrate the simplicity of setting it up in Reactor, including how to adjust the default configuration we supply out of the box. And to help us on all that, we have a LiveFly controller today. Uh, we also have other panels. Over here, we have the Carbonite from uh, Ross, including a panel so we can see some sources switch on top. And then we also have dashboard so we can monitor from our computer here. So let's just get into it right away. This is how the uh, LiveFly panel looks. And by the way, LiveFly is a switching panel, like a medium switching panel that is uh, maybe a utility or auxiliary switching panel you might want to use. And actually, uh, this could be applied on rack controllers from Skahoy. We can uh, use a, um, let me just show you here. We have a, a Airfly Pro, which is uh, one of our most popular switching panels. We even have something called Master Key One, which is an even bigger version of this one. But with the, the uh, Airfly Pro, you have um, in the version that has NKK keys, you have professional program preview row. You have also uh, a lot of four-way buttons that helps you to navigate and assign key sources and so on. You have a T-bar, a custom-made Skahoy T-bar. You have cut and auto, etc. If you uh, study our image gallery, search for master, then we have master key one and that is another controller which is like one level above and then you can also find lifeline in here and lifeline looks like this this is the one we are working on today let me just pick the one with nkk keys which are these uh high quality japanese broadcast buttons you know this is four-way buttons and they have different abilities and advantages anyway this is something you can study on darkroomskahoy.com if you want to see the uh, different controllers we supply all of these are uh, supported with this integration so Talking ROS talk means that we can assign ROS talk commands to any button, knob, fader, joystick even on Skahoy products, all of them. But we'll have to focus on this one today. Let us press some buttons. And as I'm doing that, you can see I am now changing sources on preview. Actually, over here, you can see it's following along. So that is pretty useful. And if I press the cut button, you'll also see that these sources uh, swap around. So that is my monitoring going on over here. But also, if you look at the computer screen, you can see the same that this little field called preset shows you the preset source that I'm selecting. If I press cut, these two would swap around. The background would be program and preset would be my preview or preset, as they call it. So there are different names for this sweet child, which is preset preview and program and in this case, background. Now, there is a second ME in this one. We can pick that one and we can see what, what happens if we press these buttons. Yeah, ob obviously it's not changing on that one, but up here we have a four-way button that allows us to go forth and back between whether this panel is switching on ME row one or two. So now I'm on ME row two, and if you notice the preview and the background fields, as I'm pressing these buttons, pressing cut, yes, I am also managing those. All right, you see there are buttons for keyers. I can toggle keyers on and off. I'll just go back to ME row one. And if you notice over there, you can see that the keyer buttons closer to the T-bar are now toggled on and off. And if I change this over to key on, on this encoder knob, you'll see that I am now only turning them on. And if I go to key off, I can now only turn them off. Why? Well, I'm sorry, but Rust Talk is a one-way protocol, and you may not even have noticed that so far. One-way means when we send Kia on or Kia toggle, we don't know what the state is of the Kia because we cannot read back the status. This panel can. For some reason, this panel is able to read the status out. The same is true for dashboard here, but Rust Talk protocol is one way. It is send and pray. You hope the command arrives and it does what you wanted it to, but you don't know. So what we have here is actually pr going pretty far with the one-way protocol because we are still showing you what is the assumed preset value. Now, if I change over here, unfortunately, we cannot show you that it changed. So it is advised 
to you that you are using only one panel to do this and not have a different panel. This is unusual. Most of our integrations actually has two-way communication because you want that panel to know what happened over here. It's a limitation. We cannot get around it, but we give you Ross Talk anyway. So, and, and we are proud about that. But that actually has held us a little bit back over time because it has been frustrating with this limitation. Um, we can also change uh, transitions here and mm, now I need to think because I believe I need to go somewhere else to actually, no, no, wait, actually, yeah, yeah, you can see transitions are changed. Four-way buttons for you, you see I press the sides of this button and I am basically changing forth and back between the different transition types. All right, so uh, that's that. Then we have menu up here. If I press the menu button, you get a little... Um, menu above everything here where you can choose whether you want to deal with MEs, mini MEs, multi-sources, auxiliaries, a key assignment, or a user menu where we have user buttons that we can assign. And I'll show you that later inside of Reactor. But let's just go back in the menu here. So if we go over here, uh, ME means that I am now in ME section. We have already seen that. If I go into this one, I am now in mini ME and now I can choose which mini ME I'm dealing with just like for MEs and then I can also assign sources inside of that one. We should be able to see something like that also in here. So again, our monitoring in ROS uh, dashboard is um, in, in place and that confirms what we just did. So that is all nice. And by the way, if you want to access additional sources, you have this Rotary encoder here that allows us to access more than just the six inputs I have assigned plus the media player one and two and the um, ME1 multi-view, if I just turn to the next page, I have assigned multi-view, uh, ME row 2 multi-viewer, ME, uh, mini ME, I think, uh, ME1 um, multi-view uh, audio or something, auxiliary 1 and 2, I'm a little bit unsure, but um, if I scroll through this one, you can see that, in this case, I have up to like 6, 72 uh, input 71, 6, ah, 7, T, 1 inputs. All right, and that is of course true also for the um, ME rows. Let's go back to the menu. Multi-sources, same thing. I can assign multi-source um, sources there. And auxiliary and key, that's important. So uh, basically this section works like this. I select my auxiliary, and then you see sources are changing around down here. So now it's input number one assigned to auxiliary one. I can change that to two, to four, whatever. I can move on to the next one, assign five, two, and then go back to the first. So again, um, these four-way buttons are super useful because they allow me to basically dance forth and back between the different auxiliary sources. And I can do the same for keyers. So I can now select sources for my keyers here on these buttons. I select which key number that I want to do it for. And in this case, you also need to select the ME row. So now it's ME number two. I'll select input number four for key number one. Going back to ME number one, I'll select number two. And now you can see this one will light up as I'm going forth and back between these. So th this is a section for assigning sources to auxiliaries, keys. And um, for that, it is obviously very useful. Let's move on to the user section. Um, yes. I think we want to do that. I'm just thinking, did I show you everything? Unfortunately, the T bar is not a part of it because we have no command to actually send transition position. But we have all these nice buttons I have already demonstrated. I want to focus our attention over onto Reactor. So Reactor is the software running inside of the Lifeline. So inside of our panels, there's a powerful Linux computer that is able to run quite advanced software. Reactor is the orchestration engine, which allows us to assign behaviors, uh, we call them behaviors, which is consist of feedback in the display and the color, and also the action you're sending to uh, the Carbonite, the Rostock action. So it looks like this. If you are about to configure your panel, you can actually see that the panel is reflecting what I am changing on it or selecting on it here. So we have also a simulation tool inside. This is a pure simulator, but configuration allows us to change. And uh, we also have the home screen, by the way. And the home screen is where we assign sources. So maybe I should just start out real quick to explain what we see here. We see the live fly. We have this inputs menu we can activate and now I have a table of all the inputs that I could choose between. So on this first button, instead of input number one, I could scroll down and I could pick something else. It could be ME one to four, um, ME multi-viewers, it could be auxiliary sources, it could be the program preview and clean feeds of the MEs, the mini MEs and even the background. So all these are available to me. Let me se select just aux one and you can see immediately it's changing on the panel. 
And we see also the internal integer reference to auxiliary number one is put in here. I can actually change that manually to two and now we would have auxiliary two, but I want to change it back to input number one just for consistency. Let me close that down. Um, but hey, I can also reorder by the way. So now you see that I'm swapping these around. You can, you understand that. And I can also make alternative labels. So if I do that, it now says hello instead of the default coming out of the system. Lots of stuff there covered in many other videos. This is how Skyhoy products generally work. And you are usually able to do all your configuration from the home screen in the standard case. Because this configuration, giving you all this functionality comes straight delivered with Reactor. It's built in. And you just pick that one, make sure that you set up your Carbonite with the right IP address and device ID number one, and it's going to work. And if you want your LifeFly to do something else with another switching system, as you can see, it should be pretty easy to change over to GVM, to ATEM switches, Sony, vMix, etc. Many options there. Uh, and for those of you who know what a quick, a quick class is, you can also add quick classes, which is like additional snippets of functionality you can put onto a button and for a different video. But I cover that in a lot of videos. So let's go back to configuration because I promised you that I want to show you how we can utilize the user section here. I want to be a little more advanced than usual and show you how you can actually change the user buttons that is in this paging paradigm. So just uh, work with me here. If I click this one and I'm on that background page in the section view, I am asked if I want to switch to the active behavior and I do want to switch to the active behavior. It means that I'm now editing the behavior that currently writes user 1.1 and I want to change that one. You see, it has a settings template called user button. And now I want to change this over to set specific value. And I want to do that for the, I'll pick a parameter here. It's already set up for Carbonite plus program source. I need to pick the ME that is set to one. That's all good, actually. It's not too bad. And then the value I want to set would be input number two. All right. And I want to do now the same for this one. Again, if I just selected anything here, it would be created on the background layer. So I want to switch to the active behavior. And then I will edit the parameter, select my Carbonite Plus, search up program, ME source, pick that, change this to, yeah, it's ME number one. And then, yes, thank you. Set a specific value and that value should be input number three. So now we have input number two, input number three being set on these two buttons. Let's just try that out. Input number two, input number three. Actually, we can see it's changing over here. So it is confirmed that this is working. That is awesome and great. And as I'm now changing the user page, you can see that they disappear because now I'm on the second page and they are not there anymore. So the secret source behind this is something that scares most people away like crazy. But it's so powerful. It's called the tree. And inside the tree, you see the full layer stack of layers that define behaviors on our panels. And there's a cool little feature, which if you enable this keyboard, if you press this button, it is navigating to the place in the tree where this behavior is defined. And you'll find that now that I'm on this page, page number one, and I click these, it's basically highlighting the behaviors, the user behaviors that has been defined right here. And there it, it is a different page, a different place in the system. But this user page up here is where I just defined those two. You can actually pick that one and then you can change it over in the inspector if you want to do it from the tree or navigate the controller here. Sorry for those of you who are like, Whoa, this is crazy. Please use the paging paradigm, add new pages. There is a way you can navigate by adding navigation keys so that your whole user modification of the controller is built on layers on top of the underlying out of the box configurations. We need to end this video. And now that I have taken you into the universe of parameters you can assign, I do want to just highlight a few things that creates additional flexibility with Rostock. So if we click any of these buttons, let's just do what we did before, get to this point where we are essentially being asked to select a settings template, which is how a parameter is implemented on a button and then the parameter itself. I want to show you that if we uh, pick Carbonite Plus here, we have very nice parameters that you are interested in, in many cases, custom control. Custom control is like uh, choosing a macro from, from a bank and then executing that. So that's one thing which is nice to know. And then we have something called raw command, which is your ability to actually specify a custom uh, Rostock command in clear text. So you can look up in the Rostock manual because Rostock is a fairly simple protocol consisting of letters, spaces, 
colons and numbers. So you can build commands like that. And we also have one that is like a catch all situation command that allows you to build anything, even though we have not internally supported it. Much of the internal support you see here is also making assumptions. Like when we are showing you program preview status, it is like a fake status because we're not reading it back from, from the panel. But we're assuming that whatever you sent last time has actually been received. Um, and then we are showing the status on the panel. So it gives you a sort of um, fake uh, status, but still it may be true. And hopefully it is true because you are connected to it. But um, it is also possible to send raw ROS talk command straight over to the Carbonite in this way. Thanks for watching this video. Uh, please don't miss out on news from Skahoy. So like and subscribe our YouTube channel here and follow us on social media, which is also a great way to follow us. We have a newsletter you can sign up for whatever you prefer. And of course, any questions are heavily answered by our friendly support and sales staff, which you can reach on support at skahoy.com.